Today, I visit my another good friend studio, Fanny Studio. Hello. Fanny is a very special architect because it's, uh, her focus is on heritage and conservation instead of normal uh, skyscraper building in Hong Kong. Fanny, mm -hmm. I know that you haven't worked for a very long time, but mm -hmm. why you're so brave as a, as a female architect and <laughs> start your own practice in Hong Kong? Okay, so actually I start with a, as a very normal architect in Hong Kong. I think I was bored by uh, those uh, residential projects mm -hmm. uh, that I was handling. So somehow, I think more than 10 years ago, um, I uh, went back to study, uh, to first study on uh, heritage conservation. At, uh, at the first place, I, I think it's a, as a hobby or just, uh, just for interest. But somehow, I, after I finished the study, uh, the government uh, pushed a lot of, they launched a lot of uh, new projects on conservation. So I have a chance to uh, actually work in the Antiquities and Monuments Office in the government to really work on heritage conservation. And then since then, the, but I, I uh, just work for like two years in the government because I, I think uh, I really want to participate in the design process instead of just uh, vetting the proposal from others. Uh, I have two choices at that time. Uh, either I uh, start my own practice to uh, do conservation projects, or I choose a third uh, private practice, but I may not have the chance to work on conservation anymore. So I choose the first choice. It's commonly known as the uh, guest land street. But uh, in 2018, there's a, there was a typhoon that uh, actually damaged a tree next to the um, granite steps in, mm -hmm. um, in that street. And then the tree in turn that uh, damaged, uh, I think, um, most part of the, the, um, uh, the granite balustrade of the staircase and then, um, and then also three of the four guest lamps were damaged. So uh, it was Highways Department that, uh, uh, that engaged us to do the restoration works. So I think I have a condition survey on site and then uh, the first thing we have to know is what was the damage or if we uh, have to like to do a jigsaw puzzle, we have to know if the puzzles are, um, are still there or if there are missing parts. So, uh, so we have to count every baluster. Uh, if there are uh, missing parts on and every single uh, granite piece, if there is missing. Uh, but um, I think it's lucky that uh, the Antiquity and Monuments Office actually uh, carry, have carried out a 3D scanning project beforehand, before the damage. So they have a, a, what, a proper 3D record of uh, what the staircase looked like. And then after the damage, and then they, they actually scan another round of the scanning to uh, count if the granite pieces are there, uh, if there are any missing pieces. And luckily, we, we got every single piece uh, in hand. So there's no missing pieces. But for the baluster, uh, which is uh, made of uh, reinforced concrete or just plain concrete, no reinforcement. Uh, we have to count, actually, uh, not uh, relying on the free scanning because it's quite tedious work and the free scanning can't do that uh, that much of detail. So, but the second part of the project is that uh, even though we know puzzles are all there, the pieces, but then how we can stay them together with structural integrity because it's. A, staircase and then with the balustrade that uh, people will lean on um, so and then the granite pieces they are broken broken apart so if one single piece uh, they is uh, like uh, a piece of granite is like that and then it's supported by two uh, ending columns uh, granite columns so it will be a structural design but how about it is uh, broken at the middle part then we have to introduce some support in the middle, right? So uh, the trick is we try to um, uh, use the baluster, which is which was not structural part of the balustrade, and we then turn it into a structural support by uh, adding a reinforce reinforcement inside, and then and then uh, turn it into an anchor to support those uh, broken uh, granite part, the cabin. So, but all these are hidden, either hidden in the in the baluster or just uh, hiding underneath the the cap. So, if you're not very 
careful or you're just passing by the street, you can't recognize those uh, interventions. So the project is actually a, a facade restoration, not even the whole restoration, it's just a facade restoration of a, a historic village house which uh, when we first enter the site, it's, uh, the facade is uh, paint in the normal like paint finish. But after our restoration, actually, the uh, historic gray brick uh, was uh, revealed. And then some uh, like granite or, or brick architectural features was uh, also restored. So um, that goal of that project itself is to arouse attention um, to public or even the villagers so that uh, they can actually um, realize that the importance of uh, keeping their house neat, tidy or beautiful. We have a very interesting source of funding. We, we got a, um, the funding for the restoration from the World Monument Watch, which is an organization from the US actually. They apply for the watch to, uh, to register their village on their list. The meaning of uh, getting on to the list is that uh, you, uh, the, the listed structures or the area is, being, uh, is facing some threat from uh, the redevelopment or damage um, uh, on, on the cultural significance of that site. And then and somehow when you are on that list, you can get the funding from that. Uh, uh, Populum villages uh, try to push. Uh, I remember that there, there are so far three uh, projects that involve building or land. So uh, this one is, um, I think it's the second one. Uh, so the first one is they uh, actually turn one vacant land in front of the village and then turn it into, uh, uh, they, they call it Choi Yun Day. So it's a land for uh, for agriculture or just a, a common ground for the whole village to share. Uh, um, actually, they, they um, will have some uh, engagement activity or even Pun Choi, they, they have a gathering during the Chinese New Year in that area every year since the, the revitalization of the land. And then the third project is that after my uh, restoration of this uh, facade, uh, they managed to uh, win another uh, project to uh, convince the government to give them uh, one of the old quarters of the dairy farm and for them to, to revitalize it into somehow a resource center for the for the Buffalo Village and to do some uh, promotion to the public on uh, uh, these three projects actually uh, are seats that we put in the whole area and, and it's hope that uh, this will arouse public's attention and then we create more and more interaction or things to happen inside this village and then we succeed to um, save the whole village. The religious building is in the uh, Happy Valley, which I'm talking about Dong Lin Kok Yun. Dong Lin Kok Yun, so it's a direct translation. So um, anyway, it's a, a Buddhist venue. I, I can say it's a monastery and then plus a temple complex inside. And then the, when I first come with the building, it was uh, only a grade one historic building, but now it becomes a, a declared monument. So we start with uh, historic research and then architectural appraisal, which uh, uh, and, and then I deliver a, uh, a document, they, um, which we call it conservation management plan, which is uh, to identify the cultural significance of the building. And then we count every single of architectural features or space that we have to actually put effort to conserve or not to interfere during our uh, restoration or alteration works. And then uh, uh, a series of policy that which uh, not only about um, the restoration or, or alteration or, or any of the practical uh, aspect, how to do an architecture, but also on say management or the software the program or how to, let's say, uh, do we have to introduce some heritage interpretation spaces inside, uh, even uh, some suggestion on the, the route of the guided tour. Actually, I also uh, have taken um, taken part, fully uh, lay out a plan 
a restoration plus a revamping plan for them so as to say how to restore the building uh, so that we can keep its uh, architectural feature and then that uh, sees all the water leakage inside the building at the same time and then also some revamping of the uh, interior space how it can uh, look and, uh, a bit more nice or to facilitate the uh, user's uh, modern requirement client wants to actually continue their functions inside is also part of the cultural significance of the uh, building so uh, and I, I also agree with the client that it's very important to keep the usage continue and then so that from the point of view of an architect it's a very painful experience because you have to um, uh, uh, manage a construction construction site at the same time to manage the expectation of the user which is right next to your construction, uh, construction site. I want to keep on doing the uh, working on conservation projects so I still have that wish for um, say for my company I still have uh, something worth to conserve it's not Hong Kong is not about um, building new buildings only. Uh, we uh, also have some uh, historic building that, has, uh, that can actually represent Hong Kong's history and is worth for uh, conservation. So uh, I, I wish that others can or more and more people can visualize the same goal as me.